Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor today. I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. She is amazing. Her name is Joanna Olson, and she is an entrepreneur and an amazing businesswoman. And she owns Coyote Ugly, and she does a lot of different real estate. And she's like all over the board. She wears a lot of hats, and she's been very successful in her life. And she's here today to share some of the moments in her life that has brought her where she is today. And she wants to be able to give back what she has accomplished and help others get to the point in their life where they want to be. So, you know, it's an amazing honor to have you on the show, Joanna. I am so excited to have you on the show. Tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Oh, well, first, thank you for having me. And I really appreciate being on a, another a female podcast. who has such a strong, amazing woman as well. So thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm Joanna Olson and I'm the owner of um, Coyote Ugly Saloon. Um, I'm sure you've all seen the movie and the the bar is, um, the movie is based on our bar that came out in the year 2000. So I started with Lil back then and I own the four Florida locations, Daytona, Panama City, Beach, Destin, and Tampa. And I also have a real estate business where I have over 15 rental properties um, for cash flow and things like that. So I like to build a real estate portfolio and, and have a business in that as well. I love it. I love it. Now you became an entrepreneur at a very young age. And, you know, I think that's amazing because a lot of times in our society, people are just trying to figure out who they are when they're young. It's really, you know, it, it takes people, sometimes people go into their forties and fifties and they're still trying to figure out who they are and, and what their purpose is in life. Now at your young age, when you first started and you became an entrepreneur and you started to really work hard at it and you were going in the direction that you wanted and you were starting to get the feel of success, what made you, what was the fire underneath the ignition that really helped you, you know, become a, an entrepreneur at such a young age? Because that's an amazing, you know, accomplishment. You hear people talk about being a, an a entrepreneur at a very young age and, and starting to have, you know, starting to really get into the field. But a lot of, a lot of men and women do not, you know, it, it, it doesn't happen till later on life. They're, they're figuring out the steps. You right away knew exactly what you wanted to do and you created a plan and you went after it. So, you know, how did you get to that point where you were able to have enough courage, enough resilience, you knew exactly what you wanted to do, you were able to create the plan. That's an amazing achievement. Like, how did you get to that point? Well, you make, you do make it sound like I had it all planned out very well, but I just, I knew at a very young age um, that I wanted to, my, my goal was to make money, have freedom, give back, and then take care of my future family, my, my parents, you know, because they were middle class. So I wanted to retire them. So it was really just a vision of, I had goals where I wanted to be in life, like by 30, by 40, this is where I wanted to be. Um, so that's where that drive came from. And I think you're just born with that drive. And I've had that drive since I mean, I, since I was four years old, it's just, I've always wanted to own businesses, whatever that was going to be and have, um, the financial freedom. And that's, that's really just, it was always, that was the goal behind it. Now, how, you know, how did you start to really, you know, put everything together? Like, how did you just, you know, learn like, okay, first I'm going to do this first, I'm going to do this. Cause a lot of people don't even know where to start. They, they don't know where to begin, you know, because they have an idea of where they'd like to be, but they don't know the steps or they don't know how they should begin. And the first thing they should do, you know, what's your you know opinion for other people on how to actually, you know, start, you know, you know, becoming an entrepreneur and, and doing it the right way. So they can probably, you know, cause you're going to have your failures, right. you're going to have your successes, but overall, you know, where does someone begin? Well, um, the, the thing is, if whatever your idea is, it's, it's really just do it and take action. You know, a lot of people talk about it and talk about it, but it's taking action. And that's the, the main thing I, you know, say is if you want to open a restaurant, you go work with someone who owns a restaurant, learn the basics. Cause even when I did it, we didn't, we didn't have Google, you know, um, we didn't have, I couldn't just Google. I had to go down to the city of Atlanta and have, figure out how do I get a liquor? I had to go ask someone, how do I get a liquor license? And yeah. you just, I would learn as I went, but it's taking that action um, and taking that first step, you know, and, you know, learn, like I said, the, my biggest advice is to go learn from someone who's currently very successful in doing it. And anyone's yeah. going to say, okay, come work with me. If someone said, Hey, can I work with you for two days and see, you know, how you do this? And I, that's what I do now. I get mentored and I met T and I'm like, 
you know, you can get Jack Daniels to pay for your bar stools, you know, because you can put them in your well. And there's a yeah. lot of unique things, but it's taking that first step and quit talking about it and take action. I love it. Now, what made you do Coyote Ugly? Like, how did you come up with the idea? How did you know that you wanted to open up these saloons? And how, you know, what what brought you to this idea? Like, how did you, how did it pop into your head? And, and, and how did you start to go after it? Well, Lil founded Coyote Ugly and she, she's the one who came up with the idea. And mm -hmm. I had had a nightclub called Paradox in Atlanta at the time. So that did give me some validity as far as, you know, a lot of people and no, no offense that people say this, but a lot of people just say, I want to open a bar. You know, I hear it all the time or they'll walk up to me in my bar and say, oh, you should do one here. You should do one there. But um, because I had a bar in Atlanta, I went to Coyote Ugly with my, I was visiting my extended family and um, for Thanksgiving. And I, literally my cousin's like, we're going out. This is it. And I went into Coyote Ugly. It was already ex existed and met Lil. We did like a four city deal within a week. And like, that's what I'm saying. I found a location to put it in within a week in Atlanta. And like, because I had, um, had, had the nightclub she came up with the idea, but I knew it was, there was only one and the movie hadn't been out. Nobody even knew what it was. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was like, Hey, when I walked in, I'll give you my experience of walking in. It was, um, fashion week in New York. And, you know, I was dressed up because I thought we we're going out in New York, but it was in the meat pack district. It was much more like grunge and a hole in the wall. And the girls, it's just like, the movie is truly, truly like the bar. And I walked in and they're like, Hey, supermodel, either get on this bar and do a shot of tequila or get out of here. And I'm like, looked at my cousin, like, what's going on? And she's like, you better get up there or do something. You know what I mean? Like, have fun. Yeah. So we're saying several shots later and Lil being there that night. And, you know, it's all, it all just everything worked out. And I said, Hey, are you, I want to put this in Atlanta. And again, because I had had a nightclub, she believed me. And I called her a week later and said, I've got the location. Let's yeah. go. And, um, the movie and she said oh there's a movie coming out and that was all being created at the time and then we had this huge tryout for the girls um two weeks prior we had 500 girls show up to try out to be a coyote so everybody at that time that you know the movie had just come out i was like wow i want to be a coyote you know and so it was really really a fun time and continues it's such a nostalgic brand um you know we just had our 30 year anniversary in new york and now my bars have turned 21 and we're just as popular and I'm very, you know, as ever. And um, a big, big backstory to that is I did buy my buildings as well along the way. So that's where the real estate comes in. I was fortunate enough to have um, fine partners young that there's always a way to do it. They're like, well, how did you get the money at 23? Well, I didn't have the money at 23. You, right. you I, instead of um, renting, which is the same as a mortgage, I went and yeah. bought my buildings because it's going to be, you know, I wanted that control. I learned from owning um, Coyote Ugly in Atlanta, I was leasing that building. And after five years, they said, we're going to put a parking garage here. I'm sorry. So I had this hugely successful business going and wow. it was basically shut down and it was so heartbreaking. It was more, it was much more heartbreaking for me that I, you know, had this great business that I had grown and had these great this great staff that was a feel like it's a family to me. And then yeah. the overnight, the overnight it was taken away because I didn't own and have control of that land. So wow. I always tell that to people as well, whether you want to open it, it's a hair salon or a restaurant or something, always try to buy your building. And then you also have that over time, you know, as an investment and you can, you know, resell that later, or you can continue to grow. Like I am like, we're going on 22 years and, in Ebor here in Tampa and 20 years in Panama City. And it's because I own the building and the land. Right. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, you know, it, when you have a business, there's a lot of pressure on you. Like, yeah. how did you, how were you able to really stabilize your mental health and deal with the stresses that come along with it? Because many business owners and many entrepreneurs, you know, really have a hard time. They have a hard time coping with life, you know, because, you know, it's the stress of business affects their home and personal life. You know, it affects their physical health because 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. And people just have a hard time, you know, you know, dealing with business because of everything that's included. A lot of times people just see the outside. They don't know what's happening behind the scenes. So for you, you know, having all these these businesses and running all these businesses, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of stress behind the scenes and there was a lot of things you had to deal with. How were you able to stabilize your mental health? 
deal with the stress and be able to live a happy, healthy, productive life without letting the stresses of your businesses get to you? Um, that's definitely a challenge. And it's definitely because this is, I always say this, it's the golden handcuffs. So when you, this being an entrepreneur is not for the weak at heart at all, because you are, you are, you are always working, you know, you, you have freedom, but you're always on and you're always working and you're, oh, you know, it could be two in the morning, five, anything can happen between yes. from a hurricane to, you know, it, it, any external, you know, there's so many external yes. things that you have thrown at you as well that, um, so you have to just be so resilient, but really things that are important to me are just really like living a regimented lifestyle where I do get rest. I work out in the morning, um, do yoga, do breath work, do, you know, wellness, what I eat, what I put in my body. Um, but then have a good night out with friends and, and drink tequila. I'm not going to, you know, it's, yeah. it's a balance. It's like a balance of everything, but it really, it's just really something just being very resilient and taking care of yourself um, and your body. And, you know, our, our health is our wealth. And that's what trickles, you know, there's been times where, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling as healthy and good and that affects my work or vice versa, or when something very dramatic in my work happens, like the closing down, um, it, it does, affect, it affects things. And so if you're, if you are gonna be an entrepreneur, you have to know that you're, you, there are trade-offs. There's a lot of trade-offs. It's gonna be a lot of your time and energy into the business and into your staff and every, you know, and making it successful. So yes. um, it takes a very unique person to be, you know, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, but when they see all the hard work and the things that really go on behind the scenes, it's, it's, um it's a really big balancing act. And it takes, it's, it's takes a guy of, I'm so fortunate to have a great team that I have built with me over the past 22 years as well. So it's knowing who to, let handle other things and, and doing that, you know, we really just building a great team. It's not just me, you know, you know, I think when we say entrepreneur, right, it is mine. And I, it is, I'm the one person, but I yeah. do, I build a great team that is very supportive and I can count on them when I can't physically be there or I do get sick once in a while. These things do happen. Um, yeah. I'm very fortunate that, you know, I've built that team that is there for me and, you know, has financially grown with me. I think one of the best examples we talked about is I'm very fortunate to have Todd Leverett in my life, who's started with me as a security at $8 an hour. And now he has several homes and has grown with me and owns 25% of two of my businesses. So it's mm -hmm. like you grow people with you too, to yeah. know that, you know, you're going to have those weaker moments or go through things in life. Um, that you're going to need, you know, need people to step in and really help you out and to know, know that and to take that time, you know, for yourself, even just to travel and do things. But again, you're always, you're always still working and you're always still in contact. Um, you definitely, um, sometimes I admire those nine to five people who get to go home and then don't think about, you know, the business again, but um, I wouldn't trade it for the world and the reward, the financial reward and the freedom is absolutely the goal. And what is, what is, the whole purpose of doing all of this. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. And it's not meant for everybody. You know, a lot of people want to be an entrepreneur. You hear people talking about it all the time on the internet. So people get very motivated. You know, they don't realize all the hard work and, and it's not really meant for everybody. Sometimes it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt, you know, to have that nine to five job for some people, you know, to have that stabilization because, you know, some people it, it's very hard for them to carry all these different hats that they have to carry. And I think, you know, one of the biggest things that I've seen is that a lot of people have a hard time delegating delegating, you know, um, the responsibilities to other people it's become, you know, your business becomes your baby, you know? So right. then like, you know, sometimes people think, okay, you know, if I'm not there all the time and I'm not doing everything, then it's not going to get done the right way, you know? And then all these right. people get, you know, encompassed in their, in their business that they're not taking care of themselves. And then that's where I think sometimes the problem is too. So, you know, I think so for some people at nine to five is good, but for some people they have to re realize delegate. If you want to be a, a successful entrepreneur, I think delegating and those responsibilities to others that are capable of doing it is a definite, definite, definite plus. So what's your intake? You hit it right on the head and there's nothing, you know, you know, it's all, this is about motivating entrepreneurs. And like I said, this is, I'm, I'm living my best life and it's such a great point and still growing, but it yeah. is knowing if you, you're that personality and it's it, cause it does take, you know, it could be 11 o'clock at night. It could be, you know, every day I wake up, it's 
you know, how did the bar do? Did anything happen? Is there anything emergencies I need to deal with? And um, because I'm at a point now, of course, I don't have to manage at night anymore. Thank God I have amazing managers who manage at night. But that's how I wake up every day. And um, we just had a storm this past weekend, for instance. And, you know, my whole building now has my it's a 110 year old building that I own and it has leaks throughout the whole building. And yesterday I had to meet with forensic architects and you're so I'm still learning. You know, yesterday I learned all about leaks and front, you know, water in this. So you're just constantly learning and doing and that came out of nowhere. So where if I have planned my day to do this, my week has now been been full of fixing my building, which was um, which was, you know, wind damage from the tropical storm that just hit. Right. So, you know, the, there's always unknowns and always things you got to be prepared for. And that's where I say being resilient and being able to switch and make, you know, being able to, to re, regroup your mind to take care of this and still, and you still have to handle everything else at the same time. Uh, how did you help you help yourself from not receiving burnout? Did, when you, all these years of working as an entrepreneur and becoming successful, you know, did you experience burnout and, you know, did you know what are some of the things that you could give advice to for if you have experienced burnout to help others because that's a big topic that people talk about all the time is just doing 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 and I, I've even known people that have almost died from burnout because they work so hard that they got no sleep and they just collapse so absolutely about burnout that's where um where I talked about just daily taking care of yourself but there have definitely been days where I'm like, at the, I, I thank God I've not said it out loud or really done it, but I'm like, I am done. You know, whether I'm dealing with a traumatic lawsuit that's, you know, just taken my whole day and it's, it's I know that it's, you know, complete BS and they're just trying to get money out of me because they see me as a big company, but it's really just a, a, a girl running a business that started all on her own. You know, if they knew me as a person, not as this entity, it would be very different. But um, my advice for that is that's when you do you do disconnect and take that time for yourself, whether it's, you know, I always say get into nature. That's what I do. You know, like whether it's even just a local park or something, just take that, take that day and take, or take that weekend or week and just stop. Our days in life are so precious and, you know, time is our most valuable gift. And again, I've said it, our, our health is our wealth. And, you have, I mean, nothing is worth dying over, like you said, or, or living a miserable life. You have to have balance. And that's where bringing in those key people to find and trust. And look, could I make more money and have more ownership if I didn't bring other people in? Of course. But that's, you know, I wanted to create a team and a family of Coyote Ugly through that. So that's much more important to me. Um, even though we're still, I'm still very successful and have that financial freedom, it, it's, it's, feels much better to share that and give other people those opportunities to grow with you and to see their success. Now there's nothing more rewarding than that as well. Um, And it helps me balance out. Like I said, next week, when I go, when I'm going to look to buy property and do something new and in a new investment in Hawaii, I know that Todd or someone else has got everything boots on the ground in case a disaster does happen here. I can be nine hours away, you know? So that's, that's, that's my advice for that, for sure, is just decompress and disconnect right then and take care of yourself 100%. And I love how you mentioned just maybe just do something simple, like just maybe walk in in the park or doing something with nature and just being able to absorb, you know, the beauty outside. Because sometimes we get so wrapped up in our own world that we re- what don't we forget how much beauty we have around us. And we... I think too. It sounds so, I mean, but even when I find myself getting, you know, stressed during the day or this or that, you know, that's when I will I'll grab my dog Utah and then like, we'll just walk around the park and, you know, it yeah. is, and they, you know, there is, and, and being a wellness person, a professional yourself, you know, that just the act of walking itself calms you down. It makes your brain, you know, look at other I- items and, and decompress. So yeah. really it's, it's not that you have to be a health fitness nut, but it's take, you know, just going on a simple walk every morning and, you know, just these things that really, that has completely changed my life. I was always very good about that since I started my business. Like Mm -hmm. at lunch, I would go work out, you know, like, because I needed to do that for my mental health. And I knew that it wasn't for vanity or how I look, even though that's still very important too, because that makes us all feel good. It was for my mental health. You know, it's that time to get on 
the treadmill or be out in nature and go, you know, do that run or do, you know, do that. That's what I've always done. And that's what's helped me maintain over the time. For I love sure. That. Yeah. And keeps you healthy and, you know, and definitely taking great supplements. And I believe in you know, taking great vitamins and all those things. And, and definitely look, I'm a person who tries to get seven hours of sleep every night. That's a goal. And I have a very, you know, I go to sleep around 1130 and get up at like seven. And that's my typical, unless I am out till three in the morning, or unless I'm doing something that I've chosen to do to be up late. So it's and getting, I you know, sleep is very, very important. And people used to be like, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead and all of that. And that's so the opposite of what we should be doing. Actually, you'll live 20 more years longer if you get good rest and you take good care of yourself. Oh, a hundred percent. I think, you know, I think people don't realize the importance of, of getting good sleep and eating well and, and really taking care of your body and, and your mindset and, and put in a positive mindset. I think positivity is key too. like, you know, so many things could arise when you are a business entrepreneur and, you know, you really have to have a, a, a good mindset on, you know, how you're going to deal with these problems. And I, I realized too, in life, you know, no matter what we go through, no matter how hard the obstacles are, especially in business, you know, you always get through it eventually. You know, if you look back in the past, I'm sure you've gone through a lot, you know, you get through it, you know, during that time, get through it, right. Successful, but it seems like once we get over the hump, you know, eventually it pans itself out. I think, what do you think? I, I totally agree. You know, you know, it, that's what I said about just being resilient. No, this will pass, you know, this is just a temporary thing and it's getting through that moment. And another thing with, um, you know, waking up with that gratitude attitude, no matter where we're at. And believe me, I've been at some, you know, extremely difficult times in my life, whether, you know, I'm going through a divorce is that you're still running a business. So yes. um, what I, what I've done and I've learned from other people, it's like, I do a, a gratitude journal and I just write down the five things I'm grateful for every day, night before I go to bed. And it's so yeah. helpful because I help you focus on the good things. Even if it is a terrible day, I'm like, I walked my dog. I, you know, eight mac and cheese. I, you know, it's whatever is, you know, just what are the five things that made me happy today? And there's other days that is extraordinary. And there's other days I'm like, there's nothing I can write, you know, we, and we've got to realize, and we all have these really, really difficult times. And when I do get depressed or you start doing that, go, am, am I taking care of myself, my body and heart? And then as I always ask people who are going, you know, who are very depressed and are that I said, well, I know you feel like you can't get out of bed. And there's been times when I feel the same way. But if you can get up and just eat right, are you walking? Are you exercising? And you know what I mean? You're going to find that change quick and you're going to get back on it. It's when we're not doing those things or we're drinking too much or we're doing too much of this and not, like it's not getting our sleep. That's when the depression really sets in. So I can see where, you know, it's, it's maintaining that, that level of health is so important. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, when you were, when you're, you know, when you're working and you're, you're, you're building your businesses and you're building Coyote Ugly, you know, like, you know, what, how, how were you able to just let go? Because like a lot of times, you know, pe people bring their, their business home with them. And it's really hard because it's like, how can you not, you know, you have all these things going on, things have to get done the prior the next day. But then if you don't let go and you don't give yourself time to renew itself, you know, it could really, it could really, you know, break you down, you know? Right. And, you know, so, you know, when, you know, how do you just like let go sometimes, you know, and then maybe just like, you know, give yourself time to reset. Now you talked about meditation prior and you talked about yoga and you talked about exercise and stuff like that, but there, are there other things that you do that really help you? Like when you get home from work or you've had a, you know, if you finish what you're doing for the day, like, how do you just like let go, clear your mind and then be able to just focus on, you know, the following day you'll focus on, unless there's an emergency, of course, but right. how do you let go, you know, you know, I really, those are times when I like to stay in, um, by myself and read, watch documentaries, kind of just get my mind, you know, really interested or watch inspirational documentaries. Like the other day when I was feeling this way, I went and watched the Frida documentary because I love her as an artist and love her at her time in the 1950s, how strong she was. And, you know, the, the masculine energy that she had at her time and, it, you know, it's just very interesting. So that's how I try to, I try to motivate myself, listen to podcast, just disconnect and then get re-inspired. I guess that's what I do. That's how I let it go is listen to someone who had it way harder than me and who has made it 
or, um, you know, I seek out those stories and that helps yeah. get re-motivated and re like kind of resets and recalibrates myself. I think that's a great, great statement. And as an entrepreneur, you know, I, I um, love that term, let go, but you really can't because that, you know, like I said, anything can happen at any time. So I do have to check my phone every two hours. I, mm -hmm. I cannot go two days without looking at my phone. And then because yeah. it's a very big, big decision that my manager might need to make. Someone might have just gotten hurt or an incident or anything that have happened. They need to get in touch with me. And that's yeah. very important. Or, you know, and so that's that's where the difference I'm saying is that you always have to be available as an entrepreneur. But um, right. but that's how I do at least, you know, or I, I don't look at my phone for at least two hours and put it aside. And when I am with people, um, I am very connected. I value that very much. I'm not someone who sits there and looks at my phone. I mean, we own, and I know the most successful people that I've been blessed to know and be around. When we have lunch, we are focused on each other. We do not look at our phones. We do not, you know, nothing is that important. And we know that, you know, and, yes. or, and then people respond so quickly. That's another thing I've, I've noticed people, you know, um, love my partners is, you know, she's the CEO of Coyote Ugly or all the way to, you know, the just I, the most, I guess, like my landlord's her own 36 public shopping centers. We all respond with each other within minutes. It's never like a day later or I don't have time. You know, it's very, yeah. we're very responsive. And the most, I found the most successful people in life, that's how they handle their life. They're very responsive, yeah. responsive and responsible people and very, and, and, you know, respond quickly. Yeah. And I do that with everything. And that's very, very important. I think that definitely is important. I think it's really important to take responsibility and action and don't let it linger, you know, because that's, I think that's one of the things that, that helps success, you know, you know, help people achieve success is being able to take action quickly and get the job done correctly. What's your intake? Right. That's you, you nailed it on the head. We said that you don't, you know, talk about it. It's taking action. And even if it's, even if it's with a friend or don't wait to do that call, you know, if you're having an issue with a friend, I'm like, you know, we all sometimes want to avoid things or avoid conflict, but it's like, get it resolved. And I've learned so much. Um, I've learned a lot and I'm still always learning, but there's so many stories we make up in our own head too, yeah. about what's going on. And that's where I found God for two months, man, I thought this, my friend was upset with me about this or my business partner is upset about this, but it's like having that call. And it was nothing to do with that. They were going through something personally that I had no idea about, yeah. or, you know, so I've learned much more that, you know, we're all, but it's just to reach out and to stay in contact and really, and say, check on people. You know, I feel like the more I give, the more I get back as well. You know, I wake up thinking, how can I make someone's day better today? You know, yeah. I have been blessed now. And that's why I really like to be so involved. And that's why the philanthropic and the, the charity work for me is so important. But even just with friends, like a friend I know who's going through a divorce and a terrible time, you know, I'll send them a little care package or just a message or, you know, you know, I'm, I am Christian or Bible verses and things that just really, you know, yeah. help them keep going. And you, you know, the best way to get out of your own poor me or wherever you're feeling that day is to go help yeah. someone else. And that's really been a key to my happiness and my success is paying it forward a hundred percent. Oh, a hundred percent. I agree with you completely. I think that the greatest feeling in the world is a feeling of accomplishment when you help other people and you see a positive impact in that person's life. You know, it, you know, I know for me, I wouldn't be where I am today if people didn't come out, out of the woodwork to help me in my lowest times in my life. And I feel it's so important that people return the favor and really realize how important it is to give back. It's not about taking, taking, taking. It's about giving back. And I think that's right. such an important statement. I think that's really honorable of you because, you know, not many people always do that or they do it for publicity and then they're not doing it for the right reasons, you know, but it's so important, I think, to help others. And, you know, one thing that you do for another person can change that person's life forever. Right. And I say it's just even walking in. It, it can be something substantial or just being kind as we're walking through life. Like we say, yes. we have that teacher. We don't know everyone's going through something in life. And just when yeah. I'm walking my dog, or I walk into the bank. It's just saying hi and just being kind. You know, I just yes. always try to, you know, really just lead with kindness. I think it's just something really important in our world today that we're the most 
connected, disconnected we've ever been. And that's why yeah. so many people feel so lonely. And it is important to go meet that person face to face. And we get, you know, we, we even absorb so much serotonin and good things from looking into someone's eyeballs. I mean, it's yeah. improvement. So, you know, it's yes. really important to get off all the social media and all this and really go meet with people in person. Um, myself, I have to remind myself to do that as well. And that's when you feel better, you know, as, and you'll notice yeah. a difference if you stay in, stay in and you just work and, and just look at your phone all the time. You're not as happy. You're not getting that stimulation, that people, that real connection that we need to keep with people. And I feel like the pendulum's swinging back and people are realizing how important that is. And just to stay connected to people. And like I said, whether it's giving back or just meeting up with that friend and, and, you know, keeping connected to the important people in your life that support you and that want the best for you. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. I think it, it, it's really important to stay connected with people because I think it's so, it's so easy to disconnect from people. And, you know, when you do show that you care, just like you said, just looking in a person's eyes and just speaking to them. I remember one time this, this woman was walking out of the store. I was walking in the store. She had a pretty purple shirt on. I looked at her. I said, oh, that's such a nice shirt. You look so pretty. And she just, her face like glue, you know, it was just like, it was like, she, you know, I, I don't know if she, she gets compliments very often, but it just like, you could tell it just made her day, just something so simple as a compliment, you know, and you could just, you know, people don't realize how, how much the words of wisdom, you know, or a compliment or kindness, or, you know, having gratitude towards someone and then expressing that gratitude, sharing those things with other people can just, you know, it change, it can change a person's life. It can change the way they look at life itself. You know, it's Man, so you just you just so nailed it, you know, because I that the other day I was walking through the airport and I said consciously, I'm going to compliment at least five people on the way to my plane. Because mm -hmm. I know how great it makes me feel. Because even though right. we can feel a certain way or look a certain way on the outside, you know, my father just passed away. I've been sad a lot. You know, I was on my you know, I I just started my period. I'm just being dead honest, you know, I'm having the worst day, and then I walk in you know, walk in the, the store to get myself a sandwich and someone said, God, you just have the most beautiful eyes. It's just like such a night, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I know what it does with me. And I was so sad. And I went, I started to cry like in that moment and could cry now thinking about it. Cause you're like those little, that's what I'm saying. They don't know that my father just passed away. They don't right. know that I'm physically feeling like I have no energy mentally or physically at this moment. And yeah. just being kind and just that really touches or complimenting other people. And I love you said that because that's such a big thing for all of us to do. And if if you do that and challenge yourself to do that when you're walking or, or somewhere the next time you go somewhere, you will yeah. see how great it makes you feel or how they'll open up or it, it's really awesome. So I'm glad you brought that up. That's uh, that's such an awesome thing to do. Wow. Thank you. And, you know, and I, I think it's great that you do that also. And, you know, I think people don't realize, I think one of the things is that people are too quick to judge others and they don't realize that, you know, like you mentioned, you don't realize what, you know, what, where, where these people have been and what they're going through currently in life. And, you know, you're quick to judge on someone or you're quick to judge on their actions or behaviors. And, you know, instead of, instead of judging them, you know, take a moment to maybe connect with them, you know, and, and see what's going on in their life. That way you can understand why they're doing what they're doing or why they what they said, you know, and that can change a person's relationship in general, you know, as someone that you might have negative emotions to now you understand Correct. why. And, you know, you could work with that person and have a good relationship with that person. Even if that person's an employee, now you understand why they are the way they, why they, you know, they're, they're behaving the way they are and you can work with them and, you know, and be able to have a positive either work relationship, friendship, or just make someone happy in general. Like you said, when going through the airport and just throwing out a compliment to someone and, and making a person feel good about themselves, you know, right. all we do, you know, with that. I mean, so it was coming from a genuine place, but I just said consciously, because sometimes we're scared to approach people or two, or, you know what I mean? That's, yeah. it's, it's a lot to do that. Um, but you know, I, it's interesting. You just said that because I had that conversation just a week ago, I had someone who works for me and they were acting really just negative and off and had really negative energy. And I finally just said, Hey, come, come meet me. And which can be a little intimidating anyway, which shouldn't be. But I said, I just looked yeah. at, I said, Hey, what, what's going on? You know, what's going on? And then after several minutes and, and layers, 
I found out there was something really wrong in their family situation going on. So that's what I mean. That's a very good advice for business or with our family or friends, you know, right. to really just try to see things from a different perspective. And yeah. I've had yeah. to learn and grow on that. You know, I would just, like I said, create this own story of, you know, in my own head of what's happening. Right. And it was the complete opposite of what was happening and try right. to just, like you said, see it from a totally different, different way and light and just switch the whole narrative. And I think that's super important and awesome. Yeah, I really, and do. I'm learning to do that and it makes all the difference. I, th I think it, 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 it's something that has to be learned, you know, like we grow up and we grew up like, you know, like we were talking about earlier before the, the show, you know, we grew up in environments that, you know, and we, we learn from the environment we live in. And sometimes we think that is normal. And then as we get older, we realize, you know, it's not so beneficial. So then we have to start trying to change things and we learn as we go along, you know, and it's, it, life is a learning process, you know, and we're going to have, you know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, make mistakes and we're going to do things great. Great, you know, but we learn from our mistakes and we thrive off the, of the things that we, we do well, you know, but it's, it's, you know, a lot of times things don't really start to click until we, as we get older. And then, you know, we, we start to really understand life in general, much more clearer, and then we can make more concise decisions as we get older, even in business, you know, and, and in life in general, communicating with people, because that's a, that's a huge thing. And I'm sure a lot of your success has come through being able to communicate and be able to, you know, uh, have people do the things they need to do. But yeah, I mean, you have to communicate in a way because everybody's different, according to their personality, and be able Absolutely. to get the point across. Yeah. And that's a big thing with growing, you know, most of my staff is under 30 years old. So I like to still pick up the phone. I'm like, don't just text me. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear, you yeah. know, I want to hear your vibe. You know, you can't tell that over a text sometimes. So, no. you know, it's so important to stay connected. And I, you know, I do still send the little texts and the little messages, um, of course, but I'm, I'm much more like, let's talk it out. Let's see each other. And, you know, I think as any entrepreneur will tell you, you can't be conflict adverse because you have to, you have to so many times, you know, support your team. You know, you're the leader of this team and you do yeah. have that. But so when, you know, sometimes it is hard because you go home and you're like, oh, like what, are, you know, who's going to support me now? Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's when you find it through friends or other people. So, well, you know, that, that is a, that is a, it is a trade-off a little bit there as we've discussed. Yeah. Right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now, what kind of, of core values and strategies, you know, and like what type of framework did you put together to make your businesses so successful and to take everything that you've done in life? You know, are there certain things in, in, that you really stick by that have helped you grow and as, as a person and as an entrepreneur? You know, I think, um, it's always a living, you know, learning lesson as we go. But I think the word integrity, it's like, man, I'm just, you know, I really just do, you want to do everything the right way. And the right way is a lot of hard work and it's a long journey. It's a long path. Um, but it's, it's really, that's been the key is just like, I think integrity is my key word. It's like just giving back as I go and, and trying to take care of others around me and, you know, but at the same time, building, you know, how, how we can build this and build it as a team, you know, really yeah. making it more of a team effort and having incentives for other people that work with me. Like if we do this much in sales, everybody's going to get a hundred dollar bonus. If we, you know, yes. and they all feel good about it. And I like to make those, um, m those things for them weekly. You know, we do little yeah. fun competitions and things like that. And, encourage and I know other restaurant and bar owners or people in their business you know that's so much more fun we all learn we all do better you know when I reward a girl when we have our dance practices as we do we still have our you know yeah. we do choreographed dances on the bar you know I'll have everyone write down who is that person who who you think should be coyote of the month who help whether it's right. they're always on time or they're just they always have a positive attitude and this and that and then that's how I learn who my leaders are Right. And that's been really cool, but it's better to reward them. And then I reward them in front of everybody by giving them, you know, a gift certificate and a Coyote Ugly t-shirt. And then they, everybody's like, oh, I want that, you know, and that's how you make people step up. I'm not, I like to lead with, let's encourage and give, not I'm going to, you know, batter you down, you know, so yeah. that's, that's worked. That's, that's a big key to my success with my staff is I like to reward with, you know, good people and let the, and then let the staff pick who that person is. Right. 
I love that. That is a great idea. I think when people feel that they're needed and appreciated, they really, really change their attitude and they work differently and they work a lot of hard, harder because they feel part of a team. They feel appreciated. They feel like they're valued. And that's so important. I think if you want to have a successful business, I think those are some of the things like you mentioned that can really make a huge difference in the quality of the company and how well you do overall. I really definitely think if you're, I mean, your team is your company. So a hundred percent. And it is just the, it's, it can be the littlest thing. Like um, one of my coyotes is taking DJ lessons and I got her this little cute, you know, she's been with me over five years and I just got her this cool little DJ thing and I'm going to just drop it, you know, today and she'll get it tonight when she goes to work. But it's like little encouragement things like you said, they go a long way. And I think that's where people get lost in some of these big corporations and things where they don't feel valued and they feel, you know, just so replaceable and that they're not. And that's, we all want to feel that every day. I want to feel that I want to feel valued yes. and get, you know, words of affirmation and things, you know, you, we all want that. So just to give that back, you know, you give what you want. Oh, a hundred percent. I think that is amazing. I, you know, I, cause you, you do, I hear so many people in the corporate world feel like they're not valued that, they, yeah. you know, they, feel like they could be replaced at any minute, you know, and it, when you do things like that, it makes a humongous difference. And, and, you know, and all you have to do is change the way a person feels about, about themselves and about the company and about, you know, about, you know, their future and feel valued and they will go the extra length a hundred times for, for, for that person or for that, you know, business, because they, they feel a part of it. Even though they may not own it, they feel a part of it. And when it feel, you feel a part of it, then you're going to, you're going to treat it like it's your baby, you know? Absolutely. And, and I think it's huge. What do you think? Absolutely. That's what you just, you just nailed on the head again. It's that, you know, valuing everyone. And for me, that's what, you know, this shows about being an entrepreneur. That's where it, where it steps in. You know, I yeah. wanted to have control of my future. So yeah. I, and I want to have control of you know, my properties and my home. So I own these things. So, you know, that's yeah. what I mean. Take control of everything. Even if you're not starting your business right now, buy that first condo. I bought my first condo when I was 21 years old and started with a $120,000 condo. You know, it's like, so I have control of that, you know, especially with these rents and things going up. That's why I buy the properties, you know? So yeah. it's, um, for me, it's nothing against the corporate world, but that's why this show is about becoming an entrepreneur. And that there's, it's so much rewarding to have control over your future and your everyday life than someone else controlling that who might, you're just a number to them. Exactly. Exactly. Now you've, you've, you've talked about the future just now you've accomplished so much in, you know, what is in your future? Do you have ideas of where you want to go? Because you've done so much from, from your early twenties to now in the present time, you have accomplished what some people don't even accomplish in an entire lifetime. So, you know, what do you see yourself in, in the next couple of years or in the, in the future and near to come, you know, where is Joanna going? <laughs> so I am, I am headed in. So I think I, the whole point of this was to have freedom and be able to travel and enjoy life at the time. So it's a good balance, but I am definitely growing um, the real estate portfolio. So now expanding to places like Hawaii, or, you know, I recently have got a place in Aspen and living in different places. And because I didn't have, um, you know, the trade-off of this for me was having a family didn't work out for me because I was always on the go. And so that aspect didn't, didn't work. And that's a life lesson. I would look back and tell my younger self to pay more attention to that part. So, you know, there's, right. there's that aspect. Um, but my, my future withholds growing my properties and, you know, we are looking at new locations for Coyote Ugly, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's not the more money, more problems, but it's more, you know, things you own. It's not always that I really have a nice balance right now, but I am purchasing more properties, which I think that's a nice, you know, that's what I love yeah. doing right now. So the next, the next thing is, um, I love the idea of this, a small boutique hotel. I'm looking at properties to do things like that and build, really build my empire with a portfolio with real estate. And that's where I really think people, there's a lot of mixed messages out there, but real estate is the key. And it's been the key for me to go from, um, being a millionaire to a multimillionaire. And it's been, it's been buying my properties along the way. 
and right. holding them and not seeing them renting that out. And then I buy the yeah. next property. Then I rent that property out. Then I have the next one. And then I have all this cash flow come in from not only, you know, Coyote Ugly, my businesses, that that's my, mainly the people think I own Coyote Ugly. Most of my income now comes from my real estate. Right. I love, yeah. it. I love it. I mean, even yeah. though I'm so fortunate, actually, like I said, Coyote Ugly is so nostalgic and it's doing better than it's ever done. So finding it's so great because we've gone through our ebbs and flows. And my God, I mean, COVID, COVID was an absolute, you know, I would have never expected something like that to happen and us to be shut down for six months. And thank God yeah. we made it through, you know, that was such yeah. a challenging, challenging time. And I still feel so discombobulated from that time, even now. Um, of how am I really going to sustain and, and get through this? Because we none of us knew what was, was going to happen. And I yeah. did have several friends at that time. And if I would have just been one year open, I wouldn't have been close. So you always have to have a plan and put money aside and make sure, you know, you're, you're not, you, you know, you're living in your means. That's a really yeah. big deal for me, too, is I'm always saving money. I grew up, um, I grew up middle class. So, we're, you know, we're always you know, waiting for, you know, I, I want to make sure that there's a backup, backup money for whatever is going to come up, come up, come up in life for my business yeah. or for myself. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And that's where I do feel like, you know, the real estate is too, like you, I can sell a property tomorrow if I needed to. So that's where you have that, you know, where I own my liquor licenses and I own my buildings where the bars are as well. So that's good that you want to, you know, when you are an entrepreneur, you want to grow that aspect. Right. I love it. Now, where can people contact you if they want to get a hold of you? Yeah, I think the best place is um, on my on Instagram. It's Joanna Danielle Olson, J O A N N A D A N I E L L E O L S E N, or um, um, my Joanna Coyote at yahoo.com. I'm so old school. That's my email address. And I love to DM or talk to people and um, or get ideas or share ideas about health or wellness or our business or real estate or anything it is. So I would love people to reach out. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to summarize it, you know, what are some things that you think are really important for the listeners? What would you like to emphasize on today's conversation? God, if I could do anything to just inspire that person right now, who's thinking, should I, should I do this? Should I not? Should I do it? Do it. Open that business. Go for it. The worst thing, as I looked at it, when I opened my first business is the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to go back to a, my architectural job that I actually enjoy. That's the yeah. worst case scenario here. You know what I mean? So yeah. my thing is to take action and quit talking about it and go make that first move and start opening that business you want to open. Believe in yourself. Everyone else around you is not going to do that because of their own insecurities, their own thoughts. Just stay yeah. focused on yourself and just go for it. I love it. I love it. Now, if people like... You mentioned all the things that you do and you mentioned all the things that you're interested in doing. Now, do you provide any services or basically you just want to make contact with people and really expand your business and, and really get to know other people and, and really see how you could help others and others can help you? Yeah, you just nailed it. That's really what it is. It's whether that's what it is, whether it's in where can I help volunteer and do things and give back to in society or whether it's, can you give me some advice on a bar or, you know, how to, how to, how to open that bar, or even if it's an, another business, it's all the same business model with, you know, what, yeah. so yeah, it's really just to connect network um, and, and things like that and help people, you know, move forward with their dream and then, or if they have ideas for me and I have a lot of real estate people reach out to me as well and have, I've got a property for you. You got to come see this diamond in the rough. So that's been really rewarding being on these podcasts and yours, especially today has been amazing. Oh, uh, you know, this has been amazing. I, I really enjoyed having you on the show. You are just a wonderful person. And, you know, we had an amazing conversation before and you just, you know, everything you've done is tr truly amazing. You know, you showed your resilience, your persistence, your, you know, you were just, you know, you're just a great person. You have such a great heart and you've given back so much to society. And I just want to say it's an honor to have you on this show. I really enjoyed, you know, everything we talked about today. And I look forward to maybe having you on in the future. And I, I really loved everything that you shared today. And, and you really well. have some valuable information. Thank you so much for being on the show. You are so awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Stacey. And I look forward to being on it again. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. You too. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.